The CGI has an incredibly rich history that is essentially rooted in the Green Revolution and it has had a major impact in those early days and fundamentally transformed the way agriculture is practiced around the world. CGIR is a unique organization. It's positioned as a bridge between the basic research community of scientists at universities like mine and the development community of policymakers, influencers, development practitioners. Few places occupy that space. It plays a really crucial role in intermediating, so we deploy good science to achieve effective development. When you look at how CGIR has changed and the kind of expertise it brings in together, the kinds of disciplines it brings in together now is vast. The challenge there is how do you ensure cohesion and emission? So the focus is not just in individual pathways, but what does, what does the research agenda look like for all these pathways? and, and how, how do we make them scalable, uh, as well as contextually feasible and appropriate. CGIR's research objective means it has to look into the future. Agri-food research and development investments pay off over time. R&D in this space takes years to mature. So one must work today to impact tomorrow's world, which means needing to use foresight tools. One has to look to what is the future likely to be like if today's research is to have impact tomorrow. We have to anticipate likely changes. The CGIR is committed to five key impact areas. So those multiple objectives necessitate trade-offs. Now, in research dollar allocation across different research domains intended for different impacts, and over time. So we need to make those trade-offs quite consciously. Trade-off analysis, therefore, like foresight analysis, is, is essential to CGIR functioning. It just has to happen at all scales, from system through project, and it has to be semi-continuous. It needs to be a repeated exercise, not a one-off. Impact doesn't happen by just uh, developing the, the technologies and innovations. Um, you need a, a well-planned process, particularly if the ambition is to, to have impact at scale. And one of the tools for delivering that impact, or at least planning for the delivery of that impact, is theory of change. The theory of change has gained traction because it seemed to be a, a, a useful approach to really thinking through how you get from your research outputs and the technologies that you develop, turn them into innovative ways of achieving impact. Given the pace of environmental change, uh, biodiversity loss, um, time really is of the essence. And we have to work to accelerate the development and, and widespread adoption um, of new crop cultivars. And these cultivars need to be tolerant to climate shocks and pests and diseases. They ought to be able to be grown in resilient agri-food systems. And they have to also be capable of delivering the benefits of nutritious, affordable food. I think that, that can be done uh, well by continuing to apply and disseminate modern breeding technologies in the way that's already being delivered through the Excellence in Breeding platform, as well as this, um, using these new breeding tools to collaborate and work together with local NARS partners. Building a partnership is mutual respect, but it's also looking at the talents and the issues that you cannot cover, but you can cover it through partnering by other organizations. We need a body of thinkers that they need to take forward the interventions made by the CGIR. And these are the local universities, these are the local, the local scientists which they need support and they need to be strengthened. We should not lose the resources and we should not lose the diversity of women and men because knowledge can be generated by bringing diversity into a group into a common vision and into a common act. I think now is time to also focus on training the scientists within the organisation in order to achieve the mission. For good science with impact to occur requires engaged young people who are passionate about what they do. We need to give them the appropriate guidance so that they become most effective and can have meaningful and uh, impactful careers. Seeking synergies and complementarities 
I think that is the moving forward. That should be the mantra, and that's where I think CJIR has faced a lot of challenges. And this is where I, we are all looking forward towards this more integrated, harmonized, complementary, synergistic research agenda across CJIR centers, regions, head offices, and so on. Uh, if COVID has taught us anything, it has taught us the importance of science in order to solve, to solve uh, emerging problems. And this is where one CJIR is ideally placed because it has the scientific capability and capacity to address those issues. It's a great honor and a great responsibility to lead the ISTC at a time when we are undergoing that transformational change. This change project is absolutely critically important for the future of the world, for the future of our agricultural systems, and for the future of our food systems. And I think I speak on behalf of all of my ISD colleagues that uh, we are fully committed to making this a success.